Welcome everybody to the Nintendo E3 conference. We're watching it as you're watching it. Yeah. Here we go. They're live on the E3 floor. If you've been a fan of Nintendo over the years, you'll know that the Nintendo experience is different at every E3. We always look for the best way to introduce our most important content. And this year is no different. And that's why we're coming to you directly from our show booth Aww. on the set of Nintendo Treehouse Live. It's directly. On the other side of the wall behind me, the finishing touches He's are already being fucking made it up. before we open it up to thousands of industry insiders. Finishing in touches? Hours. He, Reggie, that it's E3. Immerse visitors it's in already the world started. A single game, the newest entry in the Legend of Zelda franchise. All right. What's in store is an entirely new format for a Zelda game. Three decades ago, the first Zelda game changed the way millions of people thought about video games. Yeah, my And this week, one. you'll discover a game that could change that thinking again. Here's the first look at what awaits. Open your eyes. Narration in, in a Zelda game. Yeah. They can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, I love Zelda music. Anything in Nintendo has always been like just nondescript, like. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah. Please tell me that we're not going to just be seeing landscape shots. Hey, listen! Open your eyes. So I go in stylized, which is Wake smart. Up, Link. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's somewhere between stylization. It's like. Cell-shaded, but also a, there's a little bit of extra detail in there. It's kind of a weird in-between. You can climb! How is he doing that? Everything. Nathan Drake style. What? That was shirtless Link. Yeah, it was. You have to cook? I mean, you get to cook. Moblins? Feels as close to an open world Zelda as I think we've ever seen. Oh yeah, totally. This does seem like a completely different experience yeah. than Zelda's ever done. Not video games have ever done, but Zelda has. Yeah. I bet he's a good guy. It kind of look. It feels like Zelda Witcher or like Zelda. Skyrim, kind of Zelda like Zelda Scrolls. Yeah, the Zelda Scrolls. Like I saw crafting. Breath of the Wind. Breath of the Wild. I meant Wild. <laughs> I saw crafting, building, like shelter, hunting. Yeah. It almost looks like a sandboxy Zelda. Title drop. The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild introduces you to a Hyrule that is truly seamless, where simply moving from one place to another begins to create what may be the adventure of a lifetime. And not only is this new world vast, but it feels alive. It teems with adventure. Throughout Link's quest, Hyrule will be a resource, an ally, an enemy, 
and always a place for discovery and wonder. This is easily one of the biggest experiences ever created by Nintendo. And today, you're going to get a close-up look. The portion of the game we're highlighting at E3, a wide-ranging plateau, may seem huge. In fact, no one here this week will be able to explore all of it. But even then, that plateau is only a tiny fraction of the full game map. We'll be devoting almost this full first day of Nintendo Treehouse Live coverage to just this one environment. Then, in the future, you'll learn more about the story, the characters, and the ways in which the boundaries so of So in other words, they weren't even close to getting it done <laughs> oh God, when no. they announced but in it the end, at VGX. They weren't even full immersion close, will only come and they knew it. You yeah. experience it for yourself. However, before we show you this biggest adventure for Wii U and NX, we're going to he show you NX. the biggest new adventure coming yeah, he did for say Nintendo NX. 3DS. I wasn't expecting them to even say the name. Yeah, me neither. As you've heard, there are two new core Pokemon titles on the way on November 18th. Which is funny, because if you Sun only digest Nintendo through official As always, you'll pick video? which new starter yeah. Pokemon. I don't know what the NX with. is. Yep. So what, is he, what do you mean, Reggie? What's an NX? I don't yeah, read exactly. video game what blogs. What kind of battling awaits you? Shouldn't you introduce what the and NX what is to the layman? What does Alola region have in store for players? Well, we figured there was no one better equipped to answer those questions than the two key developers of the game itself, producer Junichi Matsuda and director Shigeru Omori of Game Freak. So before we devote the rest of the day to The Legend of Zelda, I'm going to turn it over to the Treehouse team along with Mr. Matsuda and Mr. Omori to show you what it's like to start as a Pokemon trainer in the first ever live gameplay demonstration of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. So did he just kind of confirm so it's, it is those Take two things? Take it away, things? Sam and Terry. What things? Oh, that, that's all they're talking the about today, the basically, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Reggie. And thanks to everyone watching for tuning in and joining us for another Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. We're really excited to get started. So as uh, Reggie mentioned, I'm Sam from Nintendo. And joining me up here, I've got Terry from Nintendo hey. and my colleague David from TPCI. And we've also got our very special guests, uh, Masuda-san and Omori-san from Game Freak, who are joining us to chat about Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Now, uh, Pokemon fans already know that you guys have a very long history of working with the Pokemon franchise. But OK, so since this is boring, let's talk about what we saw more with that trailer. What it comes down to, it seems, is an open world Zelda. That's what he's saying. An open world Zelda that has no loading screens, that just continues to, like, basically a Grand Theft Auto or a um, Red Dead Redemption style map that just keeps loading, like a Rockstar map. And it seems like, yeah, cooking. Cooking. So weird. Hunting, crafting, and then he had that, just for a split second, a shot of him going like this with like a, looked like a magnet in his hand. Okay. Or something, but it had two yellow art things, and it was like, that was his tool for picking up and building things. He was like placing a board between two stones, as though he was creating his own fort, which was really interesting. Wow, the trailer's already up on Nintendo's YouTube page? Followed vibes, yeah, sure, anything that has an open open world place where you as an individual are building and building up yourself as an individual like leveling maybe even level uh, nah, they won't have leveling um, would they it was really weird that he changed no they wouldn't have it wasn't just tunic color or well, that's, like that's the thing i think i guess we'll watch this the form of leveling is going to be like your equipment the whole thing will be about building up yourself and maybe there'll even be elements of monster hunter like collect the right ingredients from the right monsters and get better equipment or something? Yeah. I don't know. It looks like he's wearing actual armor in one of the shots. I wonder how much voice acting there will actually be. I hope it's just the trailer, honestly. I don't I want like voice acting in, in Zelda. That kind of takes away from its feeling. I feel like if there was voice acting in the game, it might just be the beginning. Yeah. I hope there's none at all. Is
Is this only on 3DS? Are these only on 3DS? Sorry. Pokemon. There's no way that guy is a professor. Yes. Okay. Pokemon. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, so there's a <laughs> lot for us to talk about just from the footage there. Uh, the first thing I'd like to actually uh, ask you is uh, if you could tell us a little bit more about the background of why you went with Sun and Moon as the titles for these games. Pokemon is almost never on main consoles. Huh. It's pretty much a mobile experience. But I guess that's one more reason why I'm excited for NX. All these things are only like typically mobile experiences will suddenly, if NX is what I hope it is, become console experiences by default, yeah. suddenly we'll see a, a, a Pokemon with really beautiful... <laughs> like, I still can't believe we're looking at stuff like that. That's why I asked if it was on 3DS. Did you see what that looks like? I did. How low resolution it is? I definitely did. It's messed up. Like, we all have iPhones. We don't all have iPhones. We've all seen iPhone graphics, right? And iPad graphics yes, and Android phone graphics. Times have changed. <laughs> yeah. We don't accept that from a mobile platform anymore. Hell! Fuck all those other games. Look at uh, even Nintendo's own application on iPhones. Their, uh, whatever it is. Sun and the moon. Uh, we also need thing. to talk about those legendaries that are on the stupid thing. The stupid thing they came out with. About, uh, oh, Yokai. Yo no. The Mitomo. Mitomo. Right. When I you see Mies on a phone like that and they're in, like, you know, high resolution and it looks good as far as Mies look good. Yeah. It's just, it's so ridiculous that we still are looking at resolution like that. And I'm I'm one who thinks that the 3DS was so fucking cool when it came out. God, yeah, that was cool. Dude. God damn, man. Yep. They innovated. Nobody believed Absolutely. that it was going to be a thing. The, D the DS? The 3DS. Or 3DS yep. Both of them was really. insane. And it still kind of is. The way I can't get over how that's a thing. Yeah. That you can just look at without glasses of any kind. Yeah. I think fans would be really excited about it. I but I mean, yeah, 400 by 240. Games, I won't talk yeah. about it too much yet because I know we're saving some surprises. But on the subject of legendary, if it was know, cheaper, um, I'd be more accepting of those Taiwan graphics. Where you revealed some news about another yeah. legendary Pokemon, folks remember from XY. It just hurts the eyes. From that Pokemon yeah, and you games. know, I uh, we can maybe talk about that. Really too. love my 3DS, but then I started playing the Vita, mm -hmm. and I go back to the 3DS now, and I'm like, these graphics. Man. That resolution's fine Easy. if you want to play a pixelated game. And that's why we yeah. grew up and we're okay with gra you know resolutions of that kind for so long. Because we were playing pixelated games. Pixelated games look great on that yeah. those graphics. But when you try to do stuff like 3D in that world like that, it just looks so fucking bad. Yeah. I kind of wish that the next Pokemon was... See, this isn't what it's going to look like in the game. They've made this look better. Uh, in the game. So that, that's Pokemon not going to look like that on a 3DS screen. Yeah, probably screen. not. Pokemon that's... Sun and Moon, kind of a, a, in a special way. If you think of those a screen... Those are dishonest screenshots. If you think of a screen cap uh, from what we just saw, yeah. it doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't look like that. Quite like that. So probably a good chance to talk uh, maybe a little bit more detail about... That's low res, but still better than better. what is actually on a screen. Yeah. So this is what we're looking at apparently today. It's their typical stage show, except I think less exciting than last year. Yeah. Last year, Big time. I ever so often just peeked in on it and it seemed a lot better than this. Yeah. Uh, so the Alola region, as you can see, it's made up these... Yeah, this is the conference. A, a well, they said well. they weren't doing um, a conference. Really so a to be fair, like this is what they said they were going to do. They're making everybody sit through this to find out more about Zelda. Yeah, they are. Uh, region over Where's the orchestra? Where's the orchestra? Yeah. 
Our standards have changed. Where's the orchestra? It's, it's, it's now, if you don't have one, you fail. Really Last year we had puppets. We're seeing all these Pokemon that nobody's ever run into. Even a direct is better than this. Kind of feels like the Galapagos mm -hmm. Islands, where you've got this really interesting remote area where all these other creatures are, are popping up, and you've got new Pokemon. Where's Joel really McHale? Well. Where's TV's Joel McHale? <laughs> <laughs> So really what it comes down to though is tonight when I show it to the guys it looks like Nintendo's the extent of Nintendo will be that brief trailer yeah. and maybe a little bit of information relating to whatever is talked about on stage coming up. Someone in there said that the date still says 2017. Why would it change? Oh you mean they've never they still haven't given it an actual month. Yeah. Needs more Blink-182. What time show tonight is, is at 7. Yeah. 7 p.m. It's in 10 hours from now. You know, I just want to keep on saying, like, everybody's, like, besides the obvious why I have a chip on my shoulder towards Nintendo with my business and how my show that is here to promote video games continues to, like, have to dodge Nintendo's inability to understand that this is how gaming media works now. Um, outside of my that controversy, all I can keep on thinking about is how they blatantly and no knowingly lied to everybody about the release of Zelda. And you can't tell me that they didn't know. You can't tell me that they didn't know at the VGXs when they showed the screen off screen. That they didn't know that the Wii U was not going to, or that the, the game wouldn't be coming out when they said it was going to be, because they clearly only showed it off screen because it wasn't ready or even close. They didn't just push it back. They pushed it way back. The only reason they ever told you that it was coming out soon is because they wanted you to buy a Wii U that holiday in preparation for it. Being like, well, I know I'm buying one soon because Zelda's coming out, so I might as well buy it now. It's, you know, something to play with. Maybe I'm not interested in all those other games on there as much as Zelda, but it'll be in my living room. Might as well just buy it now. I have the extra cash. That's what they knew people would do. Yeah. And they did. We have family that did. We have friends that did. Who went ahead and said, well, I'll buy one now because I can't wait for Zelda this spring. Yeah. You know, I still don't regret talking my sister into buying Timmy Tonka did it. Yeah. Frank and Suppy did it. Yeah. A lot of people who never would have even considered it had they been told that Zelda was coming out in 2017. That was me and my brother. Isn't that sad? Like, and I don't think that Nintendo's fully held to task for lying like that. Yeah. Especially by the game media. It's a little different how they're used to seeing their characters in the game. Especially their fan faithful. I bought it for Monster Hunter. Oh yeah, and there's good games on the Wii U. Smash is awesome. Uh, Fucking Splatoon. Splatoon and Mario so Kart is 8. Mario Maker is fun. Oh. Mario Kart is one of the best games of this generation. Yeah, um, we fit. I really like. And. Uh, yeah. Nintendo Wonderful Land. Wonderful 101. Yeah. Nintendo Land was abandoned and shouldn't have been. I thought it was a great idea. It was fun, though. But outside of all those, you still, still, <laughs> the fact <laughs> is <laughs> that, Super Mario 3D World? that Zelda still sold a lot of consoles. Yeah. And they knew that the. <laughs> and they knew that it wasn't coming. Yeah. I don't love the new remix. I love DK. Oh, God, so good. It is nice, kind of like listing off the good games on Nintendo because so it wasn't a complete failure the Wii U. Yeah. It wasn't a raging success but it wasn't a complete failure either. Yeah. Okay, so this rendering. That doesn't... I feel like that's higher res than the 3DS has. Maybe it does have that. Maybe it's a bit better than what was in my mind's eye. But the trailer looked like way worse than this, didn't it? I thought so. <laughs> it's still not great. Top screen is higher res, yeah. Oh, right, I forgot about that. Oh, my fingers crossed. That would be really cool. It's not as bad as was in my mind's eye, but next to something else, uh, the trailer was blown up and like full screen. That's so true. When you get it all full screen. Yeah. Good call. So this name. 
It looks a little bit better when you're looking at it from a distance. And that's probably why they always do this. Show a 3DS yeah. from a distance. Definitely in game though. So at this point in the game, it's a little bit, uh, slightly into it, but it's uh, the, the player actually had just moved to the Alola region uh, the other day. There's an upcoming and, uh, 3DS emulator that will output HD and games look game good without the pixels. Seriously? So it'll re- it ups the res? On the way to a neighboring town where there's a I guess, festival. yeah, you could. If you get into the guts of the game, you could tell it to output at a higher res. Textures won't get higher res, but the polys could. <laughs> Yo, why aren't they showing the bottom screen? That is kind of weird. Because they do have stuff going on on the bottom screen. They have to. It's called Citra. Or something like that. So as you can see in the Alola region, obviously it's not just new Pokemon that are unique to the Alola region, but from other regions we see Pokemon. So, um... Ah, there's the bottom screen. Oh. They were just working their way up to it. How cool would it have been if they showed us NX this year? I wanted to see NX. I would have been pissed because they said they weren't showing us NX. So then it would have been another lie. Oh, that? Yeah. I'm just talking about in general. Yeah. Not if they did it as a surprise. That would have been very nice. I want to see NX. I want to see what's next. I'm very excited about the idea of one console to rule all Nintendo instead of splitting the market with 3DS versus Wii U. Mm -hmm. It's such a great idea. It really is. A, it, it makes sense. Let's see if they end up doing that. Because if, if Nintendo keeps coming out with consoles, people are going to continue to kind of, in a way, cheekily laugh at them. We're going to laugh at the graphics compared to other consoles, and people will continue to compare their console to the other consoles. But what if they upgrade their graphics? They'll never keep up with the other consoles. It's not their priority. They're never going to try to meet that bleeding edge. Not that the consoles are bleeding edge, but they're never going to try to match. They're always going to be what a reserved version of what consoles currently are. One generation behind. And that's all they need with yeah. Nintendo IP. They've made that clear. I accept that. So why not put it in a mobile system where, like we've been saying, a, a Vita is fully capable of running... I believe a Vita is fully capable of running Mario Kart, one of the best looking games on this on the Wii U. That is fully capable of running Mario Kart. Yeah, I totally agree with that. The games I've seen on the, the Vita, it could easily run Mario Kart. And so, let's take that power and put it in a Nintendo console that is amazing. Yeah. That I'll look at those graphics and we'll never, you, you won't see me criticizing what Nintendo's accomplished. This is like. A Dragon Ball Z battle right now. Do you see yeah, how long they've been like just staring, staring at each, each other? other? Down. <laughs> the lamest Dragon Ball Z pa battle ever. I agree, Lionheart. Vita is criminally underutilized. It's too bad Sony abandoned it. Oh. I, it's and it's partly Nintendo's fault. They beat the shit out of them in the Japanese market. And Vita Tech is from 2011. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. That's nuts. How did I not know what was it's so beautiful. in my drawer for a while? Like, it took me a long time. Because they didn't advertise it well. Yeah. They didn't have a good enough third-party support, I guess. I don't know. Not a lot of people developed for it. Yeah. Install base was low. I think that's why, actually. Third-party support, I've heard it was actually quite good. It's very easy to develop for. If you develop for the PlayStation 3, you were able to put it on the Vita just like that. Yeah. It was so easy, according to Brian Provinciano, he told me. Do you hear how hard it's raining? Yeah, I hear that. Craziness. A lot of people hated the Vita memory card and its price. That is true. And now there's no real market for it. Yeah. There's no market for something like the Vita because of mobile phones. And some might argue that there's not really a market. There is a market, obviously, but the market's shrinking for a, a Nintendo handheld as well because of phones. Mm, which is why Nintendo is talking about going mobile. Core of what the series is all about. Yeah. Going out into the world with your Pokemon battling. Oh, I love my 3DS and like the street pass shit. Fucking gets me. Like I want to take my 3DS 
anytime I travel, which is insane. It's awesome having it on the plane as well, and then I want to street pass whenever I'm at the place. But no, they're smart there. Your opinion about controls on phones sucking is subjective because you're not a child who's grown up with only phones, first of all. Second, they don't have to suck. There's really cool attachments out there that add joysticks and buttons that make a, an iPhone look almost like a Vita. Hmm. That's cool. And some games support it. You just clip it in and it's like playing a Vita. That's really cool. Taking it to conventions, the 3DS is so cool. Yeah. But also annoying that you're carrying one more device. I know, one Wouldn't it be awesome heavy device. if all the Miis were in your phone? Same thing, but in your phone? So you didn't have an extra... <laughs> I don't want Nintendo in my phone. This time was really encourage players to again really want to catch a ball, really fill up. And I don't even have a phone, so. You can see there's the lady just got registered, but next to it. Yeah, so it's not one more device. What that does that indicates there's an empty space, which means that either has an evolution. I apologize if you tuned in to listen to these guys. You should go to the other their channel if you want to, cuz I'm just not at even close to interested in a long-winded discussion about the nitty-gritty of the new Pokémon game. Okay. I'm happy to watch a trailer. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I don't want to watch this. I do wish you could get more than 10 max street passes at any given time. I remember Nintendo fangirl teaching me how to do street passes. <laughs> I was like, what she the did fuck is this thing? Sam taught Becky yeah. <laughs> and then I was how like, to do street pass. I got used to doing it at PAX, and I was like, I came home and I was like, where is everybody? This thing's jank in Vancouver. <laughs> getting hungry and then so it's looking for food but whenever it's hungry it also gets very aggressive. A mongoose Pokemon? Is he new? I feel kind of bad for it though. I feel like you just throw out a bag of chips or something and it'd be like, thank you. Always hungry. It's not even a Pokemon, it's just a mongoose. Getting close there. New one. That's two down. Yeah, this is mongoose Pokemon trending. That guy was easy to capture. And actually, this will give us a chance to maybe take a look at the Pokemon It does so clearly uh, say Yongoose. Is it a noodle type? Is it a noodle type? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> hey, this Pokemon's a device. He's a digital Pokemon. Oh, it's a Pokedex. Never mind, it's just animated. It is a Pokemon? Oh. <laughs> I thought he was the Pokedex. What's a Pokedex? It just has all the Pokemon info. Oh, okay. It's like another device for you to carry around. It's a Pokedex possessed by a Pokemon? Actually helps you in your adventure, so it'll tell you information about Pokemon that you really want to catch or give you tips about how to catch Pokemon. When's that Pokemon Live coming out, which is Nintendo's next mobile app? Pokemon in your phone to capture when you walk around. So right here, actually, we're, we're still really early in the game. We don't have the Rotom Pokedex, so the touchscreen is just black. The All right, Pokemon has gone too far. And here, actually, this is a great chance. If we just like take a little quick circle around, we can show off uh, not only the trainer's proportions, but also the, the movement is a little bit different than what um, so folks who played previous Pokemon games have expected. Beta codes have been being sent out. Hi. Pokemon Go. <laughs> So yeah, you can move around. It's free, uh, full analog movement this time again. Oh. I wonder if oh, our we need to tell players friends what's going to be here pumped about this. when they're seeing the, the shadow. Our friend comes over and just <laughs> plays Pokemon the whole time. Who does? Doobie. Really? Yeah. I didn't know she played Pokemon. Yeah. Um, what resolution is the Vita? And what resolution is the iPhone? So you see that. Uh, lady over there or the girl throwing a pokeball up and down and uh, so she's a pokemon i'm asking trainer, you guys basically because uh, i don't want to pick up my computer right now what that kind of uh, shadow that appears on the screen i'm also just thinking like because I, I want the nx to be 1080p 720p i think 
So I can either the Vita is actually battle it. Yeah, well, battle it. Nine hundred sixty by five forty four. Thank you. Ready to fight. Nine sixty by five forty four. But it is really nice if you're in a position where maybe you're trying to get so the the. Or, the annex has to be higher res than that. It needs to be high enough res to look awesome on a TV. It needs to be as high res as the Wii U. It needs to like be a true console resolution. Doesn't need to be 4K, <laughs> by the way. I don't think the consoles need to be 4K. Don't worry, Punisher. If you are gone for 20 minutes, this is what you've missed. iPhone 6 is 750 by 1,334. Oh, really? Yeah, at that size, it looks gorgeous because yeah, really all those does. pixels are crammed in mm -hmm. that retina. Yeah, it's definitely one of the new things. I think by having the trainers in battle, like you mentioned, it really gives you that sense of scale. Something in between. It's not in between, Gallon. It's both. In between says that it's across, that it doesn't meet the standards of either. I want it to be both and be meet the standards of both to the best effect. I want it to have better power than the Wii U. Doesn't need to be by a lot, but I think it should be a little bit better power than the Wii U in terms of graphical capability and look gorgeous as a mobile uh, platform. It needs to have a like a retina display, basically, in Apple marketing speak. Iwata did say it wasn't everything in one device, but I feel like... I think it will be. Even if they have, what we were saying before is like, even if they have a dongle to like, plug in to, I don't know, your TV then it will send what's on your handheld device to your TV. Fake Cause says on Twitter, this Nintendo stream is like handing in an essay with large font and double spacing. <laughs> they have so little to go on, but they're just trying to keep it stretched out. That's keep talking, even though they incredible. have nothing to say. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, when do you think they will start talking about NX? Do you Metroid, anything? you're wrong. Metro, uh, uh, Retina is not marketing jargon for a display with high pixel per inch resolution. It's literally for a, a display that has such high resolution at the normal viewing distance in which you will use the device that pixels are indistinguishable to the human eye perception. That's what it literally means. And it's, I, I'm glad that they came up with a word for it because it's so much easier to say retina. I apply it to things that aren't Apple. If I can't see the pixels from the distance that I'm using a, a device, then it's retina. Hmm. Anyways, what are you going to say? Uh, when do you expect to see news on NX? I can't guess with Nintendo anymore. Some people are saying maybe Gamescom? Well, didn't, didn't Nintendo month? say that they had a thing planned for a month from now? Oh, okay, then Gamescom. I think that's what they're refu referring to. Gamescom's in like two months from now, three months. Uh, it's June... The state and see like, yeah, is, is it I in August? Young Goose is painting animation. <laughs> <laughs> Just so cute. They're apparently <laughs> holding their own event <laughs> later in the year. <laughs> they talked about an extra <laughs> event. <laughs> Gamescom is usually in August, okay. <sighs> it won't be a conference, Munchie. It won't. Nintendo's not going to hold their own conference. Though they should. <laughs> Nintendo yeah. Con would be huge. Dude, that would be amazing. They've done such a poor job. I know, I know. <laughs> like, Nintendo has the most rabid fan base out there. And you've seen companies like Sony do such an amazing job at taking their fandom and like amplifying it. Yeah. And making it look as though... A celebration. A celebration of gaming culture. Not shitting on people because they love your game and yeah. put it up on YouTube. They embrace it. The PlayStation X conference has been such a huge success. Nintendo needs to fucking take what their strength is, and that is everybody's, l like, uh, what do you call it? I never had it. Unconditional love. <laughs> You've never had it in life. They're the only company that has unconditional love, I feel like, from their fan base. No matter what they do, they're loved. And they are spurning it. Yeah. They could easily be 
<laughs> utilizing it and being such a juggernaut if they just like cultivated that a little more. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even require any effort. Stop being a shithead on YouTube. That's step number one. Yeah. To cultivating your fan base. Uh, Tokyo Game Show is in September. Becky and I are going to Tokyo Game Show. Yeah. We have to book our <laughs> flights and shit. But yes, we are going. On our own, on our own dime, <laughs> on your guys' dime. You guys are sending us, I guess. <laughs> I should have I should announce that. Yeah, I officially. Oh, you're ready. Oh no, we'll just run some. Alright. Still no Gamescom. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. <laughs> You unconditionally love me, right? Right? All right, so... Terry, are you gonna heal up after this? Or? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get healed up. I unconditionally love you. Thank you. No, you they, they, I read something in there. No. No. All right. You meant it for me. You said it. Does Nintendo go to TGS? So uh, actually, as we come into the, this area here, we're going to be meeting. Yeah, we'll be like vlogging from that, the uh, event or like. Oh yeah, we're going to send you tons updates. of shit. I'm buying a an unlocked iPhone so that when I get there, I can buy an S, uh, a data chip or what do you call them, SIM card from Japan and put it right into my iPhone. And then I'll have a phone. Yeah. He's talking to Turbo Buddy. So this has been revealed uh, already in a, a video that we released, but uh, it's really strong trainer on the They this don't go to teach. Isn't that the, fucked oh, up? What the hell? God damn it! I thought they I, were gonna be there. I kind of knew they don't go. Really? Yeah, I, I always remember there. never seeing anything from them on on the show floor in Japan. I don't know why. What is it about TGS they don't like? It's so weird. <sighs> So this is how you're about to battle him actually uh, as part of this festival. We'll, so we'll see about it, Radian. <laughs> and that's Professor what? Kukui right there. And use, the use our money to come to eat Paxis. We needed a year off. Yeah, Believe me. Fan response I've seen. He yeah. Is. And like we said, the year off also came in conjunction with a family trip that Becky's family had planned to go to Disney very close to it. And I just don't think we would have had the, we wouldn't have had the, the energy to do it, I feel like. Yeah. And I don't think my family's ever doing that again. Yeah, they're not making it an annual trip to yeah. Disney, so don't worry. Assistant of Professor Kukui, and she's not a Pokemon trainer, but she'll join you on your adventure. This is bad. This is real bad. Bag is kind of interesting. Some people said Nintendo would reveal an X at TGS. That's what I was like really, really hoping for. That's but possible. it sounds like they'll probably have some. They have some stuff at TGS. <laughs> they went to TGS in 2008, so maybe they'll go. I went in. Oh, they weren't there in 2008. Okay. The thing is, we're Bucky's waiting really through all this, and then I don't even want to see too much of the Zelda and stuff. This face. Mm. Uh, the way that we'll watch Pokemon higher quality Zelda tonight, because no doubt the there's going to be a large discussion with the guys, because they like grew up with Zelda too. Battles. So except for Kyle, who's <laughs> never played a Zelda game. <laughs> it's fucking weird. And watching you guys fight. Crazy. <laughs> You're loving all this footage now. Oh, of that. Of the I'm sure. Game? Pokemon super fans are, are happy with this. Yeah. Like, that's why I want to kind of talk to Doobie to see if, like, this is actually really exciting for him. But this is not something, this is not a conference replacer. Yeah. This isn't even a direct replacer. That's what we said. How has Kyle never played one? See what you do, do you do to your kids if you don't give them all the pop culture? It doesn't matter that he's younger than us. And a lot of you guys are in your play. Do you know how sad it is? Like, our, we have a friend who never had a game console, and she just, like, any time we all get together, and this was before the show even started, uh, play video games, she just doesn't get it. Anytime we talk about video games in a group, everybody's, like, talking about, you know, like, you know, everybody's drinking, and they're, like, going off about, like, a video game they played when they were a kid, and all that nostalgia just has, it doesn't click with her in any way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, this is what you do when you, you fucking, you keep something from your kids. It's a good thing she's funny as hell, because otherwise... <laughs> she is funny, but, um, 
You can't, you shouldn't, even if you don't agree with it, you shouldn't keep your kids from pop culture. You can see both your changes. You have a lot of friends. That, yeah, but you're like all fit and shit. So who? Bundro. <laughs> he has a lot of friends who have never played or never had a video game system. That's so sad. <laughs> wow, a YouTuber didn't have a TV when growing up? That's just child abuse. <laughs> my sister's, one of my sister's good friends didn't have a TV growing up and she totally like is out to lunch like when yeah. anybody talks about anything yeah but she's used to it she's like oh i just know whenever it's a tv reference like she yeah references yeah. like she doesn't even get tv ain't evil and like movies like none of that stuff i want that quote from civilization when you discover radio for the first time in civ 5 i don't know who where they got the quote from but it's this brilliant quote about the bringing together of nations as one in one culture and one voice. And that's what media, broadcast media does. It's such a, yeah, it's such a good quote. It totally sums up why pop culture and, and broadcast media is important. Ever see one of the other new it just, like it totally it makes you suddenly be able to relate to somebody that you've never met before yeah and you can just like have a conversation because you grew up with the same fucking thing very uniting factor the whole country was tied together by radio we all experienced the same heroes and comedians and singers they were giants woody allen that was woody allen Shit. <laughs> that's a good quote not a woody allen fan but that's a good quote woody allen <laughs> And so once you've oh and dear. Sun and Moon, once you've it is a very good quote. Once, the next time you battle it, you'll get information. But it's true. Move list about mm -hmm. which moves Instead of having compartmentalized are, culture from city to city, which was also a strong cool. cultural tie yeah. within your region, yeah. suddenly the region was the country. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly the country was brought together by one thing. We as Canadians grew up with CBC children's shows and we all like can talk about what we grow up with. Yeah. I think especially when you're trying to catch more Pokemon. You know, I think okay, we grew up in the best era to be too. Right now. I need to kind of Pokemon down, so we definitely grew up in the best year to do a show like this, I think. Yeah. We spanned generations. We saw everything from Commodore and Atari all the way up through this. We had the hand-me-downs. We were there for the birth of Nintendo. Nintendo modern consoles and all the way through. So I don't think we can go too much further in the gameplay because we're going to start giving away story elements that we don't want to show folks yet. Um, but you did bring another video for us to nice. take a look at. Your dad has, still uh, plays video I games and he's in his 60s. Uh, That's awesome. It's good for your brain, before. too. Keeps you sharp. <laughs> That's one thing I have wanted in our community is like one of those world maps. You can like peg where you're from. I think those are so cool. <laughs> My mom and dad play Call of Duty Nazi zombies every day in their, their 60s. Seriously? I'm going to kill those Nazis. My mom still plays RPGs. Because that's how a 60 year old talks. I'm going to kill those Nazis. <laughs> when she was 50, she was like, hi, honey. <laughs> then she turned 60. I'm going to kill Nazis. <laughs> Jesus, mom. Um. What? Battle Royale? This looks like a new feature. What's a battle? Did Battle Royale well, exist before, how guys? The rules are for Battle Royale and how the matches are decided. My dad, who's 60, wants to play Doom. Sweet. So in this mode, it's actually four players. Um, four player Nero Battle Royale. Royale. And battles with one at a time. Um, in this video here, we're just uh, oh, one. Oh, the battles are one at a time. Big fucking deal. So it's a tournament bracket, but everybody stands and watches the other two. I thought this was going to be really neat. He just said that the battles are done one at a time. How this actually works with uh, how it determines the winners. So this is a free for all battle. Um, but whenever one of the trainers, when the first trainer to lose uh, all of his or her Pokemon, that signals the end of the battle. 
Okay, How many Pokemon do you have? Okay, no, they're all going at once. Why yeah. do you say that the well, battles are done one at a time? Holy sure. shit, 60 minutes? Once the battle is over, once the all the Pokemon, uh, it's then the 60 minute match time? Yikes. I think he means they just attack one at a time, I think? Okay. I think it's really interesting what this is going to do for strategy as folks are they playing. They spend generally speaking, about 90% of that time looking at each other, Pokemon though. To find yeah. Another trainer. Uh, it's only a one-on-one -on -one situation, so you can look at their Pokemon and say, okay, I've got this Pokemon that's going to be strong against this one, but you're worried about two other opponents here, so you really have to think about who's going to fare best against a group. Three other opponents, actually. Yeah, it's... This is pretty exciting to be honest. I think, I think Pokemon would be fun if it wasn't turn-based. If they took the franchise and they did, well, I mean, Pokemon Battle Royale, I kind of want to see what it's like. Because I think Pokemon, <laughs> I get excited about the old Pokemon, but I don't want to play a turn-based game with them. I want to basically have Smash Bros, but all Pokemon. <laughs> but I, how did you guys like the Battle Royale game that they came out with? Did you play it? Pokemon Tournament? And folks watching was it here, good? may have caught that the trainers there were wearing different outfits from what we saw with the uh, the regular player characters that we've shown off so far. We can't really talk about that yet, but worth noticing. <laughs> it is awesome. Wait, the demo didn't like it. <laughs> People love it, apparently. It's okay. Tekken with Pokemon. Is it the Tekken company that made it? Um, I was curious now that you've had a chance to uh, see some fan reaction for these games. Um, how's it been seeing how uh, Pokemon fans have reacted for Pokemon? I heard good things, yes. Hmm. Controls felt weird. It's interesting. Nintendo makes me sad. I feel sad. I have so much work to do before the end of the there. I know. I might not be able to do the Resident Evil game after this, guys. I think I need to get to work because I have to put together all the trailers for tonight. The 20th anniversary of Pokemon. One of the goals we really want to kind of, you know, for the future of Pokemon, really My kind Twitter of feed is excited about the things they've shown. I think you, we've announced previously, uh, in addition to the seven Yeah, but your Twitter have, feed's uh, full of weirdos. Sapphire, we also <laughs> added uh, Chinese, uh, simplified Chinese and uh, traditional Chinese. And I think a lot of the, especially from uh, those regions, like fans have really been excited about Is there a forum thread to send you links for new things messages. released today? And, uh, is there anything uh, final that you'd like to wrap up and say to fans who are watching the stream right now? You can start one. We probably won't have time to watch it with the guys tonight, to do it with the guys tonight. But like I said last night, I only want suggestions for trailers that are not currently on e3recap.com. In other words, anything that was a part of the conferences I obviously already know about. So any uh, uh, E3 recap seems to just be getting, or like E3 recap seems to be collecting everything, even yeah. if it wasn't in a conference. They yeah. seem to know about it and have it on there. So if E3 recap missed it, then I guess you could tell me. Some insight into the development work here. Uh, folks watching again, that was Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, which are coming out for the Nintendo 3DS family of systems this November. So you don't have to wait too much longer. And uh, please don't go anywhere. In a few moments, we're actually going to be coming back. Uh, our Numa Sun is going to be stopping by to show us some gameplay for a game you might be thinking about, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, so uh, please don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Why was he there? <laughs> he didn't do anything. She did the, all the asking of questions. I, I he wasn't didn't do paying a thing. attention, granted, but I don't <laughs> think I saw him talk. <laughs> he did not do a thing. She does seem nice. He was emotional support. <laughs> oh, he, he was played. playing. He got okay. to play the game. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. That's how little attention I was playing. Decoration. <laughs> Diversity. <laughs> Eye candy. <laughs> Diversity. Uh. Oh, man, oh, man. Oh, Numa-san is coming.
This sucks. You can watch them disassemble, though. <laughs> Are you interested in that? This is a waste of time. Who are we listening to? Starship Amazing? It's Starship Amazing. Hillbilly music from Alaska. Yeah. This is what they play on their porches, like with banjos. I've been to Alaska, I know. Yeah. Just picture a bunch of Alaskans on a porch, just like with banjos. <laughs> it's amazing the, the tone they get out of it. It's really weird. You wouldn't think they could get that sound out of one. Is Starship Amazing still making music? No. Oh. I have really been. I did a run from a relay from Skagway, Alaska to Whitehorse, Yukon. I ran 17.5 kilometers. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, that. Derek moved to Seattle? I think I ever knew. Why doesn't he go to PAX anymore? Yeah, he hasn't been in any PAXs from what I saw. Why doesn't he call us anymore? Oh, it's pointing too far to the side. No! <laughs> that way? Yeah, that's good. He's busy making a show? Yeah, I might do Resident Evil during the show and trailer because it would let us have a discussion about the graphics. Because again, I'm just flabbergasted. I can't believe that kind of graphics is gonna be capable with VR. It just blows my mind. It makes me excited. Like I can't, it's so hard to believe, but I don't think Sony's gonna lie. Played the demo and it's beautiful. I think it'll be in VR, lower resolution maybe. Like even lower resolution than the eye pieces mm. are. It's the, not a very long demo, you should have time. Okay. okay. Cause the eye pieces are like on the headsets that are coming out are like 1080p per eye, kind of. I think, what's the res on, I think the PlayStation VR is a little bit lower res than the other ones. It's 1080p divided by two. So maybe that's why PS4 can, VR can do it? So 540. Maybe. So that's why, cause, cause the other headsets, what are the other headsets? They're better. That's how I think PlayStation kept the price down. Uh oh. It's similar to PT, so you might end up hating it. Please tell me there's no obtuse solution to some bullshit. Just to tell me that you don't have to look at a dot on a wall until you go through the dot. Or whatever the fuck happened in PT. Let's hope they're not chutting the mift. <laughs> you can actually finish the Resident Evil The Rift demo. is 2160 by 1200, so that's like... So it's... Okay, so it's not that much more than... PSVR is only just a little bit lower than those. Well, Biofan, I don't... PSVR is 960 by 1080 by per eye. Oculus is 1080 by 1200. So it's 1920. So it has 1080 per eye, but it's split the 1920. So it's, an, it's a 1080p screen. Split. Is this gameplay actually going to be an hour and a half? I guess I don't know. I'm asking them if oh. they can confirm that. Um, 
So anyways, like uh, somebody in there said that Elite Dangerous has had VR for a while and it has good graphics. It's on the PC and the, my question isn't, I know that VR can have good graphics, there's nothing about fundamentally about VR that says it can never have good graphics, it's just that it takes a lot more power to have the equivalent graphics um, that you see on a similar powered machine. You're not going to be able to, on a PC, see the same graphics through your VR headset as the max settings that you use when you're topping out its capabilities. So the fact that what we saw from that Resident Evil demo looked like the pinnacle of graphics on console generation. Like, that looked as good as any game has looked on a console. Yeah. And so, I wonder where's the overhead that makes it run like that when you put on a VR headset with the PlayStation. <laughs> and I guess that's Excuse it. Me. The VR, PSVR has an extra processing box, but it's not gonna... I don't think that processing box is a graphical processing box. It's like... It takes some of the, it offloads some of the processing capability, or like what needs to be processed, like for head tracking and stuff. I don't, it's not like a graphics card in a box. The PS4 is still gonna have to do all the rendering, unless they've done something completely. Aliasing was really bad in the demo. Yeah, aliasing. But that's to be Companies expected. have made it clear that. They don't think anybody cares about aliasing, and apparently the fans have made it clear they don't. Because any review I see, you guys have seen what how I get about aliasing on the show. Anytime I see a review on a similar game where I was disgusted by the aliasing, aliasing's not even mentioned. Yeah, that's happened so many times. It's like aliasing doesn't exist to some people. It's like cilantro or something like that. Like, <laughs> it depends on who you yeah. are. It either really bothers you or it just didn't. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, it is interesting to note right now we're in the middle of an event. This sucks! <laughs> Boo! I hate cilantro. What was that? All those times that just got a... Someone just said we've been here for three minutes. No, but that somebody posted times that apparently have just been announced. Oh. What was all that stuff? Hey everybody, welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. I'm Ed, here with Bill and Noriko. Maybe and I'll cut this into two. Guest, Mr. Ayanuma has 